somebody's on the label to work is work you understand don't don't see it as um um, the label is giving you the platform or the opportunity you are there to work because when the money starts coming the label is going to take their cut you get it so it's not any adum now be here We are on. You're welcome to another edition of Talk Entertainment here on Ghana Web TV. And I am your host, Elsie Lama. I have here with me the handsome <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Drew. Hello. You're welcome. Thank you. It's been a while. Not really. Not really. <laughs> yeah, not really. Yeah, you've been around. And yeah. Thing. Yeah. I get it. So, um, let's delve right into it. Great. Have you met your look alike yet? Yeah, yeah, I have. So, unlike others, you are actually cool with them. Um, cool, as in I don't, I don't mind whatever they're doing, except if they're using it for you know something wrong. And I've already spoken to them that you know they can go about doing their own thing, but then it shouldn't be something that would dent the image of or the brand of the artist they are there they are trying to impersonate you get it so uh, apart from that, i don't i don't think it's is anything you know wrong mm -hmm. yeah it's it's more of a blessing that's how i see it yeah but i feel like people who have lookalikes uh, there's some sort of you know attention the attention that you have got is mm -hmm. like in the long run is being divided don't you think that is the case and it could further jeopardize whatever thing that you have. No, I don't think so. Why would people know the original and people know that it's just a, more of like a fan fandom thing, mm -hmm. you understand? It's not really I don't think that people would book you like you'd have an a show or you want to organize a show and then you go and call a look alike instead of the actual artist. I don't think you would do that. People with low budgets would do it. No, I don't think so. Really? Yeah, cuz you can't fool the audience. The audience are not fools. You understand they are not they are intelligent people Ghanaians are intelligent you understand so if you want to fool somebody no 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 Ghanaian people nah we'll not catch you those, <laughs> not big stages but those um rural settings There's, where maybe because now they are celebrities mm. too. um celebrities <laughs> i don't think so really yeah i don't i don't think so i think that we should we just need to like watch we, we need to watch who we give the celebrity title to mm. you understand because you can't just be calling anybody a celebrity you're just giving people pressure but the dictionary definition says a celebrity is a popular person so we can't change that. a celebrity is a popular person yes. oh wow okay then then i think yeah. that has to be revised because mm -hmm. it means that if if i'm popular today then yeah. i'm automatically a celebrity exactly. Oh wow! Okay, so me, anybody, I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, well, then we need to revise it because yeah. that's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, and I don't yeah. think that people, people would. Well, if you say they are celebrities, then fine. Yeah, <laughs> <They are laughs> celebrities I, based on the fact that they are popular. Okay, yes. then I can't, I can't fight. Honestly, I can't fight it. All, all I'm gonna say is, it gives people pressure. You understand? Because once you're a celebrity, you are named a celebrity it means. Financially, you're okay. Um, well, well, in other sides too, you're yeah. okay. Yeah, so you need to... And then you have a good influence. Exactly. Okay. That's a whole different kind of mm. pressure. So if yeah. you're ready for that, they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, there's a notion out there that when you move away from a particular label or a management, mm -hmm. you struggle. Mm -hmm. I don't know about other places, but here in Ghana, they said it's fast becoming a trend. Mm. Uh, do you see yourself towing that tangent? Um, first of all, I don't know. I don't know who started that myth, but I don't think it's totally true. Usually, it's based on what you what your agreement with the label was. You understand? That's what people keep forgetting. Somebody's on the label to work is work. You understand? Don't don't see it as. Um, um, the label is giving you the platform or the opportunity you are there to work because when the money starts coming the label is going to take their cut you get it so it's not any 
I do now will be here. You understand? You are there to work. Once that's why there are contracts, and then when your contract ends, you move on. You understand? So usually it's based on what the artist, the agreement that the artist went on the label with. Sometimes you can't perform the songs that they made for you because sometimes they like pay everything concerning the song, even get you writers and stuff like that. So that one probably they own the songs to the the they, they own the rights to the song and probably you might not be able to perform it. So it's it's different things. It's more of a work based thing. It's not like oh once you once you leave the label and that's it. Once you leave the label and that's it. And sometimes people need to measure the label's ability and what they've been able to do over the years and then compare it to the artist's ability to and the artist's energy as well. You get it? Yeah. So it depends it is so many factors, but honestly I don't believe that's 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 an issue. Yeah, because outside the country people have left moved to one label to the other and they are always doing well. People have moved from being on a label to like being independent and then they've done so well they've opened businesses aside the music they've opened like brands clothing brands you know makeup stuff and, and they're doing so well so it's a myth honestly it's a myth to me so um, uh, in your case is it flexible are the terms flexible when you leave are you supposed can you do you still have access to performing your songs and stuff um like that? in terms of the 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 whatever contract or like the terms in there I wouldn't want to, you know, speak it's about, yeah, out. yeah, because yeah, those are like confidential. Okay, yeah, right. but everything is, everything is cool mm. and sweet. <laughs> okay, but then, um, have you identified some of the areas that you feel like could be a little bit of challenge, um, stepping aside or moving away from that side? Maybe certain things that you, you were helped to do, mm -hmm. like you had hands around mm -hmm. to help you with maybe doing it alone mm -hmm. are there areas like that that you have i have like? i have people working under me even though i'm an independent artist mm -hmm. i have a team that's working for me you get it so regardless i'd have people i have somebody who's going to be an, a booking agent i'd have a road manager i'd have a pa i'd have you know an administrator i'd have people working for me you get it because at the end of the day i'm a brand as well so Independent doesn't mean I'm doing things on my own or I'm doing it myself. I'm picking calls myself. I'm sending emails myself. No. Retimi was in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about this, but I have to. <laughs> he was in Ghana and uh, I felt like he has a song with Eugene now. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship with Eugene now? Uh, we're cool, we're cool, we're, we're cool. We're cool, that's yeah. what he would say. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they'll all we're say. Cool. We're cool. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, um, he was in Ghana, mm -hmm. and I think they worked on a project together. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think that it's, I don't know, but it, it, there's, there are sessions out there that maybe because you guys are not, we're not cool, that is how come someone like Eugene did something with routine? Oh, no. I think that, I think Eugene is already, uh, he signed to Empire Music, uh, Empire, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, routine is also on Empire. And aside that, I, I, I heard that he, he saw the, the video and then of Eugene and he liked it. So it's, I think that's, that's something that's happened for Eugene and I'm happy and I'm happy for him. I don't think it's about anything else or nah, nah, nah. It's just pure, it's just pure vibes that he liked the vibe and then he jumped on it. Aside that, I don't think there's anything. What's your relationship with Eugene now? Yeah, yeah. With Rotimi? Um, I never had a relationship with him. Yeah, that's that. So I don't know. No, okay. I mean, how do you relate to him now? Relate to him? Yeah. Like, as, a, as a colleague artist, like a fellow are artist. Are you so cool? Like, no tension? Oh, no. How can there be tension? Did you see he's, he's, him? He doesn't, he doesn't have a graduate with me. I don't have a graduate with him. So, how can there be tension? But did you see him when he came to Ghana? No, I didn't. Wait, well, I think, was I even in Ghana by then? When was it? When was this? Uh, Rotimi was in Ghana, I think that, that should be in somewhere in February or March. Because in March I was in the UK. Yeah, either February or March, one of them. Uh, I don't, I don't think I was around. Oh, okay. All right, growing up in the industry space, mm -hmm. maybe um, there are times that thing, a, a lot of things happen maybe in, on stages, yeah. backstages mm -hmm. and stuff like that. What would you recall as your most interesting encounter, maybe with a colleague, whoever it might be? on stage, backstage, 
something interesting that ever happened? I haven't fallen on stage before. You haven't been booed off stage? Booed off stage, never. never. Even when I didn't have a hit song. Yeah, you go feel the energy. I think you there, you dance. So even if you don't sing, right, you just do some... Uh, even if, even if I don't dance, we give you good music. Mm. You understand? And we entertain you. Because I'm, I'm always interacting with my fans, regardless of whether whether they know my song or not. You understand? They are always like, oh, Charlie, how we could do them? Yo, what's up, you guys? You know, I talk to them. I talk mm -hmm. to the fans. So you feel like now nah, you're part of the yeah. performance. So me, never. I haven't had any, you know. When was this? I performed at Nima just recently for the Salah Fest. And then they introduced me. Everybody was just quiet. I was like, hmm, these people don't be stubborn. Pa. <laughs> First song, third song, every now nah, everybody started jamming with me. You understand? I think that's that's like the the hardest uh, crowd. Why were they quiet though? <laughs> hardest crowd? No, I don't know. I don't know. But usually, I think that probably they just want to see if you're gonna shake or you know they just want to see. If... No, but you have your songs are hit. Oh yeah. So it's they supposed don't to hit from they the start. They don't care about that. No, no, no. They don't care. They don't care. They wow. will literally stand there watch you. But yeah, by the by the third song they were jamming with me, and I think that sometimes sometimes it's, it it shows your strength as an artist. It puts you on your toes. Yeah, right? your strength yeah. as an artist. Like if you can't move this crowd, yeah, you can't move anybody else. But you put, do you feed on the energy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crowd. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, imagine you are introduced on stage and nobody's everybody's like sitting there watching. I Me mean, usually I just tell you to get up because you're about to jump. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, if you are not ready, probably I might leave. Because, <laughs> you know, we all feed off each other's energy. You are there to have... It's a show. You are there to have fun. Don't come sit down and assume... Unless you... If you want to sit down, you can stay at home and then sit down. You get it. But as far as you're there, we are there to jam. Performers have been booked. You understand? It's a performance. Even though some, you're watching somebody, you're part of the performance too. You understand? So, yeah. So the crowd at the Nima, fe Nima Fest, mm -hmm. what about... Would you like describe that as the most challenging crowd you've ever had to encounter? <laughs> nah. Stop on crowd. Nah, I, I, that wouldn't be. Oh, there are more stubborn ones. Oh, plenty. Oh, really? Yeah, but then theirs was theirs was kind of crazy because they introduced, oh, let's welcome Mr. Drew, and then everybody was like, ooh, yeah, and then I still went on. It didn't even take long. Like by the third song, they had the energy had started like moving all the oh, way to okay. the roof yeah people had climbed story buildings just to watch me would you say that maybe it's the song you chose to no, no, no 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 it's not the song they know the song they know they yeah. even know the person they know you understand but it's kind of probably i don't know maybe they were tired by the time i i i, I came to perform or maybe they were expecting somebody else mm. you understand sometimes it happens sometimes they can hype them for and a different yeah. artist, yeah. Usually when you're about to go and stay, they'll be hyping somebody else for the performance. And then when you come, they are kind of disappointed. Mm -hmm. But they still have to jam regardless. So, yeah, it's, it happens. It's normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> what about low moments? Have you had any of those? Low moments? Yes. Hmm. Low moments, yeah, definitely. I I'm human. I'm not a robot. Can you share some in case someone wants to take a cue from what you went through? Um... Low moments, hmm. hmm. The low moments, there are plenty. Give us plenty. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember one. Yeah. Uh. What? 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 what. Mm. I think that there was a time where I released a song, but like the expectation that I had for it, it wasn't. I, I wasn't seeing it. You understand? So at that point, I was I was pretty down a little bit. I was like, damn, because I really, really love the song. Yeah, there are songs where we release and then it's not really, but then people love it regardless. You understand? But And there are so that, songs that are really close to our hearts that when you release, you're expecting people to like hold it so much. But you can't really, you can't really tell, honestly, that people, people are different. People, people have different moods. You understand? Sometimes they can, they can, love what you what you love or they can love something else that you don't really like you get it so um that situation kind of brought me down a little but down the line people people love it now people love the song now, and i'm kind of really shocked because i was like wow what song is that um diana yeah because so nice. yeah, i was like 
when I released, the people were, weren't really messing with it. You understand? Then down the line, I've heard so many people come to me, even when I've I've gone to like interviews and then that's what they play. Mm -hmm. And when they play it, it's a different vibe. Yeah. yeah so I'm like, oh, okay. Probably some of the songs need to just grow on you. Yeah. Just take some time and then grow on you and then it will become people's favorites. Every interview that I've gone to, if they are playing music, they play Diana and the reaction for the from the people. I've had the producer tell me one that's one of your my favorite songs from you. Me nyampu my bossa every time Diana, every time Diana. So yeah, um Charlie make you no give up. Just just do you, just keep feeding the people, just keep giving the people content and definitely all is gonna pack up. It's like a bank, you are growing a bank, you understand? All go a bit pack it, pack it. Yeah. So far, how is it like being a solo artist? It it's, like? it's the same as being a label, on a label when I was on Highly Spiritual Music. It's the same vibe, same thing. Yeah, same thing that I'm doing, same thing that I was doing on the label. So, so nothing has changed? No, nah, not at all. Okay, all right. Um, let's take a breather here. When we, when we come back, we're going to talk about his project and some of the things that he would want us to know. We'll be right back. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium mm. quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. We are back. If you just joined us, you're watching Talk as MNT on Ghana Web TV. And I am your host, Elsie. We are chit chatting here with Mr. Drew Sile. How do you say <laughs> Sile? Sile. Sile. <laughs> Trademark. Yeah, man. Okay, so um, take us through your projects. What are you currently working on at the mm -hmm. moment? Okay, so I, I currently have a, a single out. Title is Tomorrow. Um, beautiful um, Afro piano music. Uh, I'm also working on an EP that will be dropping this year. I'm working on um, a concert as well. Aside the Sele concert that I do every year, I'm going to do that still. But um, I'm looking at a, a paid concert, a very planned, well produced, with like um, nice stage setting for my fans that just want to pay and then come watch me perform live um give them a different ex people that are looking for a different experience mm -hmm. yeah what's the um motivational inspiration behind your tomorrow song um okay so i just feel like i had to drop a song that could motivate my fans because things have have been hard these couple of months from what well, the currency dropping and you know people complain i've heard people complain about so many things from everybody yeah like it'll be a shit so i'm like charlie make a drop something that would at least inspire somebody to go on on their daily hustle and you know go for what they want at the end of the day mm. yeah so that's the that's the idea behind tomorrow so uh where are some of the places that i know as people in the art space yeah. you, you draw your inspiration from a lot of mm -hmm. things what are some of those things for you? Where do you get your um, inspiration to write your songs? Well, usually um, I observe what's, what's happening around me. A uh, story from people online. Um, yeah, even my fans can literally DM me. You get it. So yeah, I derive inspiration from basically everything. Things around me, people around me, um, their stories, and also the beats. Has it ever dropped in your dream? um i've had a couple of <laughs> i've actually have had a couple of um sounds that i had a dream about and then i that when i, I, I soon no 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 no. they are all on my phone like my 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 voice notes um as soon as i wake up i have to record it but i haven't had the time to work on them but then i have a lot a lot maybe maybe those are the <laughs> yeah. the world bangers <laughs> what god is sending you like hey my son use this one <laughs> yeah but work on them work on them yeah I, I feel like everything takes time and you need to like take your time to work 
especially with this type of work you need to take your time you don't have to rush it because you want to be here for a very long time i don't want to do this one year two years three years and then you know that's it i, I don't want to rush through it i want to take my time grow with my fans and then give them something worth a lifetime you get it yeah yeah talking about you know wanting to do this for a short time uh, we over time we have seen how some people within our space mm -hmm. just all of a sudden as they grow things tend to become really you know some way there's like a topsy-turvy ride in their career mm -hmm. does that scare you sometimes um i think that's natural in everybody everybody's lives you understand even it's not just the music side even with work the work that you're doing it can literally collapse at any time so there's always that fear no, as in them becoming like veterans in the space oh and nothing to show for it sort of um f nah i don't think so i think that that time has passed because now you could literally eat off your music that you've released like five years ago you could still eat off it you understand as far as you're promoting your 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 dsp like your the links to your dsps um you could still be eating from it still be getting your royalties from it as far as you're registered to collecting like music collecting bodies you understand like they could take your monies for you even when you are you're not releasing music anymore so you'd realize that even the old old producers and stuff they've gone to upload their songs again on the digital platforms and then they are making money off it because people are still streaming the old songs when you go to the uk they are always listening to aso by kwabna kwabna you understand so um yeah you can always make money always there's the the music is a business and then you can always make it's not it's not just fun you don't you don't just upload the song and then go and sleep no when last did you receive royalties um i think it was this this um beginning of the month uh beginning of the year yeah i was supposed to receive some uh last month but it's still being worked on so but was it good it was it good enough yeah, yeah, yeah. even when you're splitting mm. yeah so you can't relate to that session now that they're not doing the if you if you do your things right you won't go angry mm -hmm. if you set things right if you're uploading your songs to the right platforms you've got the right uh, bodies that you're registered to who are going to be taking your royalties for you why would you make bangers and then you're hungry no yeah there's synchronization there's money from streams you can literally do a soundtrack for people or use your song they could literally send you you could sell your song for a netflix movie or something they could synchronize it and then you can get paid for that you understand so there are so many ways to it sometimes people just see one side of it there are so many ways there are Ghanaian artists here they are not so popular but they are making so much money because mm -hmm. their sounds are being used for tv advertisements you know they're, they're doing other stuff for like big big companies and it's yeah it's all part of the music circle <laughs> it's like i'm giving you plenty yeah, for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh I, I personally go for seminars like that so oh cool I cool 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 and um uh, you kept on mentioning about um, other lucrative ventures yeah what are you doing aside the music um aside the music um i'm into fashion too it's something that i want to do on the side i'm also into acting like your own clothing brand not my own clothing brand more of like modeling oh. and then yeah my little brother has a clothing uh, brand that we want to build so that's that but then yeah uh, that's fashion is something that i'm i'm going i want to go into aside the music i want to go into acting as well because i did theater in school so yeah i could literally branch into anything that i want and still be doing the music we'll be giving you everywhere everywhere back to back <laughs> i see yeah uh, you've been in the industry for a while mm -hmm. what what is what are some of the things you've identified that um are ills shortcomings be it from the stakeholders yeah be it from the system yeah wherever it might be what are some of the things you've identified um one major thing that i'd say is um invest investors right whether private or from the government i we feel, i feel like more money should be pumped into our arts because it's going to bring more attention to the country you see people moving out for tours and stuff it's their own money that they are using stone boy is doing a tour um he has released an uh, an album crazy album 
doing like a tour up and down moving around it's their own money nobody's investing you understand um sakoda is doing a jam store own money from his own streams his own pocket it's not easy from shows and stuff so sometimes we just need and sometimes the money that we put into our work it's crazy if we shoot if we tell you how much we use for even like video shoots to what we're wearing to performances what we put into our performances and everything you'll be shocked you understand into into even promoting just one song takes a lot of money you understand than um you, like how do i even put this let's say somebody will be spending around a hundred thousand dollars on like one song without oh, video spend that much oh yeah people spend that it's much possible. yeah it's possible people have spent people have spent i think like like camido has even come out to speak about his song I that he, yeah you will spend even more even people are spending even more so imagine like if what we had you? if we had me i can't mention any amount <laughs> as for you <laughs> yeah i can't mention any amount please but I'm, i spent i spent on my singles and um i'm just gonna say that we need more investments like private private investors or from the government need to put more money into this because at the end of the day when these afro nations and stuff are doing their shows here you'd realize that they don't even book our artists mm -hmm. they book more of the outside mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. you understand because those people have invested a lot into their craft so they bring some some kind of you know some yeah. image they some sell yeah you understand so imagine we had that kind of investment it would be crazy so the private sector the government sector too if you want to invest in the music please do because it's lucrative it's um it brings attention to the country it sells the country as well because we're shooting music videos we're putting our you know all the nice nice places in ghana in there we're selling our, our arts as well our culture so yeah why not attitude wise mm -hmm. are there some other things you have because it can't only be from investors mm -hmm. there are other people too that their attitude hinders a lot mm -hmm. in terms of this what would you say about that um i think that would move to being to just personalizing it you understand because if you talk about attitude people have bad attitudes but then they they do the work they get the work done so it's not even about attitude when attitudes that affect industry because they are front runners mm -hmm. and there are people that what they do can mm -hmm. detect the stance of the industry yes exactly and that's what i'm saying like that it's being personalized it's been um it's been how do i put it um i say we're, we're putting it in one small or focusing it's being but focused on one Uni unity um not wanting your brother to be on the same stage of like mm -hmm. something like that you know no it doesn't matter all those things that's it it's because we're not wanting somebody to be on the stage. it's because there's no money if there was money everybody would be okay nobody would mind whether somebody is being on this on this stage and they're not being on this stage because at the end of the day there's money being pushed into it everybody's doing so well nobody really cares so you feel it's because people are not really doing well that's why you know that's really it's because we're not we're not getting the resources that we need you understand if we have the same resources we have the as much re, uh, stuff going into our works nobody will really care obi and obi in nam usa obi in nam has obi in obi a bonnet or obi a it's hard for an artist to groom an artist in ghana because one case i don't feel they say you are not there yet our baby groom you be uh, i mean it could be one of those things because let's be honest like how much how much are you spending on your single and then now you have to go spend some even some of the labels are suffering in ghana you, you understand like some just have the name and they are not really doing much you get it so adding is very difficult so it's, it all boils down to the money is if investment is being done right and then a lot of investors are coming in for the music industry artists that they can point, pinpoint and say that oh i can invest in this guy in the next five years he's going to make me this amount and he's going to be one of the biggest performers from africa let's invest in him why not every everybody will be okay because at the end of the day will be new being corporate yeah will be a bit okay but see and resources need to be Obinya, Obinya, Obinya assets kakra obed damage you be a. You understand? So, and it's not their fault. You get it? It's not. It's not anybody's fault. It's because the resources are not. It's extra. 
and we are all gunning for it. Everybody's going for it. Yeah. Before we draw the curtains, what is the craziest rumor you've heard about yourself? Oh, I heard that I was gay. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that I was gay. That was like when I started. I started music. I, somebody, I heard people say that I, I, I was gay. I'm like, how? Yeah, that's like the craziest rumor I've heard. How did you feel when you heard that? Yeah, I just, I just thought it was funny. I just thought it was funny. Wow, but yeah. how do, do you look like? Oh well, do you look like a gay or something? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the person was thinking. But I wasn't at this big though. It's just like I said, my phone caca. Maybe our body means yeah. My body. Now my hair slim. Now we need six packs. Mm hmm. Now my my phone. And, and yes, it's your when you're six packs. And yes, oh my God, so your master gay. And yes, so your last we words. Move. Um, I just want to say, um, keep streaming my music. Tomorrow is out everywhere. On all the platforms that you listen to music on, you could go to Boomplay, Audio Max, Spotify, um, where Apple Music, everywhere else. Just stream my music. Um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, my new YouTube channel, Mr. Drew Official. Go there and then subscribe. You can follow me everywhere um, at Mr. Drew Official. So Facebook, Mr. Drew Official. Um, IG, Mr. Drew Official. TikTok. Also, yeah, um, to f not to forget, uh, I started the dance challenge for tomorrow, so you can join as well. Give us the, the song, a little bit of the song that you want the dance challenge for. <laughs> okay, so it goes like, Everybody gets a problem. In this world, we all live. No go kill yourself to solve it. Leave them for yard, wipe off your teeth. And every time you fall, remember. So when you're me, we're there for us. As you they count your blessings, try to move for deep. Baba go wash all your soro so. It go biggie like it dodo. When the money go flow, life is short, so don't stress. Whether you get them or you know get. Me, I can't come and keep myself. Happiness I won't get. Nothing there for pockets, but me, I know they care, oh, sorrows, hey, forget all your sorrows, dance like there's no tomorrow. I can't come and kill myself, but <laughs> <laughs> here's where we draw the curtains to this edition of Talk Assignments. I hope you had a good time, and uh, we had a good time here too, so we catch you another time, till then, be good.